Okay. Right. So you're looking at Isaiah 6, right? Where uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah, he has his encounter with God. And I think it's good to read it. Isaiah chapter 6, um, verse 1. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. Okay, everyone, we started. Okay. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. With two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of Okay, so the question is, you know, Isaiah, what did you, what happened to you, right? Who told you that you were a person of unclean lips? Who told you that you dwell among the people of unclean lips, right? Nowhere in that passage till that verse do we see that. But Isaiah came to a realization, and right? he came to that realization. Why? Because he encountered God. He encountered the presence of God, right? He saw the presence of God. He saw the beauty of God. He saw the glory. And he suddenly realized, hey, I'm a man of unclean lips. I've been saying some things that are not holy. He just came to that place of brokenness, repentance. And he's saying, I'm undone. Undone meaning I've, I've just been reduced to nothing. Right? I've just come fallen apart. And so he says, you know, and there's also the awareness of unworthiness and sin and everything and, and also of those around him. Right? And then later on in the passage, we see the cleansing that happens. And then, and then also that question, you know, who will go for us? And then he says, you know, I will. Here I am, Lord, send me. Right? So we see the whole uh, process of cleansing and, and plan and purpose and commissioning and all that happening in the presence of God right so in the presence of God we see that there is that brokenness which comes not because somebody argued and made a point and said hey you need to change but just the presence of God caused that to happen right so um, so that is something that we see in the presence of God the other extreme also is there you know it says um, Psalm 16 verse 11 if you're following in the notes it says you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Like, in your presence is fullness of joy. Right? So, when you think of joy, you know, the best way to, you know, I just like this definition. Joy is something that you experience despite the circumstances, despite what is happening around. You know, Happiness is you know, dependent on good things happening, right things happening in our lives, everything falling in place, everything going right, right? Happiness. I'm happy. Why? Hey, great weather. I'm happy. Why? You know, things are going fine in my life. Joy is despite what's happening in the environment. Right? It's something deeper and something that cannot be taken away, something that's put in there because of the presence of God, right? So, so we see this, you know, in your presence is fullness of joy. You know, there's not just half measures, but it's this fullness. It's like, it's like overflowing. Right? In your presence is fullness of joy, and, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Right? Um, Psalm 45, 7 talks about the, that he's the one who anoints us with the oil of gladness. Um, Hebrews 1, 9 also talks about that. So this presence of God brings about joy and joy that is expressed in many many ways you know in celebration and rejoicing and exuberance despite all that is happening right the and the early church also again displayed that 
right? We see that they walk in this joy of the Lord. Now, how else can you explain certain verses uh, in Scripture, especially in the book of Philippians? Right? If you go there, Philippians, okay? Um, look at... Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Um, and go down to verse 14, right? Do all things without complaining and disputing. Okay. Simple instruction. Who's writing these words? Paul. To whom is he writing to? The Philippian church, right? And he's saying, okay, do all things without complaining and disputing. Okay, don't complain, don't dispute, you know, do things, you know, be at peace. Then we understand, where is Paul writing from? Right, then that instruction makes, takes on a different perspective altogether. Where is he writing from? Is he in a resort? Which resort? There. Yes. <laughs> He's in prison. Right. So these are some of his prison epistles. He's in prison, no freedom, right? And no assurance of living. You know, may, maybe beyond that, no, no assurance. Right? He's in prison and he's writing to those who are free and he's saying, do all things without complaining and disputing. Let's look at another verse, right? Um, chapter 4, verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Okay. Can somebody read it? What does he say? Huh? Rejoice in the Lord. No, rejoice in the Lord. Always. Again, I will say. Yeah, I don't know. Don't what is that word? Always. Where is he? Prison. Who's he writing to? Those who are free. Right? Rejoice in the Lord. Always, and he's saying, and then again I say to you, rejoice. So, which means that Paul had a sense of joy in his heart because of his of the presence of God that he was experiencing, that you know, that was undefeatable. And therefore, he could write to others who were free and who were maybe having some petty squabbles and complaining and disputing, saying, Guys, rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice in the Lord. You don't know what you have, right? The, the presence of God. Rejoice in the Lord. The, the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. At Galatians 5 talks about that love, joy, and peace. And so this is something that is produced in our spirit by the Holy Spirit. Right? This joy is produced in our spirit by the Holy Spirit. So again, the presence, our intimacy with the Spirit of God, right, are engaging in the presence of God. That is, again, necessary, right? So the Holy Spirit produces that in our hearts as we spend time with Him, as we engage with Him. He pours it into our heart. This joy is saying, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice, right? So this is something for all of us, for all of us, right? young, old, middle-aged, whatever, you know, this is for all of us. This is the reality that we are called to walk in, right? The reality that we are called to walk in. And I, um, and I remember, you know, at, at, you know, I just recall some of those moments in, uh, in earlier on, right? When uh, I didn't, I, I had, I think I remember, I had one rupee in my pocket, okay, just one rupee. And I was working and it was, uh, you know, reaching the end of the month, one more day to go, so I was just, I was not thinking and I, 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 I how to manage. I, at that time, I was married and all that, so many things to do. And then if things get delayed, you know, salary gets delayed, all that, you know, how will I pay the bills, all those questions. And I was thinking, God, you know, why didn't I study better? Why didn't I you know, get a better job? And, you know, at those moments, you have all those questions, right? I should have just obeyed my parents. I should have obeyed my teachers. They said so many times, you know, study hard, study hard. You know, 10th, I did very well. 11th and 12th. Just went down, <laughs> right? So I'm just thinking all day. I'm just hitting myself, 
acha i should have done a good job what 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 kind of a job am i in and you know this salary is still the same and i've not got money and all that at that moment the spirit of god put a song in my heart you know I, and i remember exactly where i was i was just from the office i was just walking down the steps uh, about to get on my bike and go meet some client and all that i'm thinking oh, if i the bike runs out of petrol also i don't have money and what will i do you know all those thoughts and the, the you know god puts a song in my heart an old song right it doesn't depend on the circumstance the strength of my arm or my voice but it doesn't doesn't depend on the way i feel but i've made up my mind and i'm going to rejoice it's an old bob fitz song it doesn't depend on the you know all these circumstances but i've made up my mind and i'm going to rejoice this is, the lord is putting in my heart the song and uh, i just began to sing it and it was so difficult to sing it and now i'm just crying and god no it's not fair <laughs> but i just sang it at the and as i kept singing it i the joy of the lord just 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 hit me like a wave and i was just like oh i don't care anymore see that what that's what happens when there's a joy of the lord right the circumstance might remain the same but you are not the same right the circumstance can be like a prison like situation like paul was experiencing but you are not the same you're free as far as paul is concerned and you read it he's like a free man right he is he's is totally free maybe there's a physical prison the prison but then he is completely is is not bound in any way is absolutely free in his spirit right so the joy of the lord it is for each one of us okay there is renewal of strength that happens in the presence of god you know? um isaiah 40 talks about that isaiah 40 28 right have you not known have you not heard the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary you know say saying hey don't you know god never runs out of steam right there's no limit to his strength he never goes weary he never faints so he's just pointing that out his understanding is unsearchable because he's infinite he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength Okay. even the youth shall faint and be weary even the youth shall faint and be weary but those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint okay those who wait on the lord who are expectantly not passively but expectantly just waiting on the lord they shall something happens to them they shall renew their strength you know physically you might be strong right physically we might have strength to do things but then if we are weary emotionally then it affects us physically yes or no right sometimes you know it's not like you, you're not unwell you know physically you're okay but inside you're completely you know gone and you're just weary so that affects us that affects everything the way we see the world the way we do our things and we just can't seem to even though physical strength is there you know it affects us <clears throat> it seems like we are drained of all physical strength right so here it says those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength there is a recharging that happens there's a renewal of strength that happens and that is for those who wait on the lord which means that you are in the presence of god we are waiting in the presence of god right it can be you know uh, uh, you know in seclusion maybe we take some time out we say i'm going to wait on the lord i can i'm going to spend some time on the lord or maybe you know you, you are busy you are busy during the day you're just going on you know your uh, normal routine but your inside your your you just waiting on god your focus is on god those who wait on the lord shall renew their strength so it's a promise you know, for us to experience wait on the lord are you are we weary is wait on the lord and let's experience the renewal so that's for us right to go back to the lord to go back to the presence of god and to experience the renewal of strength you know i remember watching this video about two afghan afghanistan you know girls um, maybe in their 20s mid 20s whatever young young girls 
who came to know the Lord Jesus, Muslim girls who came to know the Lord Jesus and, uh, uh, you know, radically on fire, sharing the gospel, you know, uh, distributing Bibles and all that. And they were, they were in prison. Like they found out, they were doing this secretly, but they were found out, they were in prison, they were put in prison, and prison of the worst condition, right? Like they will be thrown in, um, this is just one one room, that's it. And you just be there, they don't, they don't let you out, food just comes in, maybe, you know, rats are running around, the worst kind of prison, right? And blankets which are dirty and full of, you know, bed bugs and insects and all that. And they just need to live there. And these are young girls, right? But they talk about, they say that, you know, so somebody, the, the person who was interviewing asked them, you know, how did you manage? You know, you were, you were young. Uh, how did you manage? You were going through this horrible, you know, kind of, and every time, you know, the mental torture, okay, do you give up Jesus? Do you give up Jesus? And they say, no, we don't want to. No, we won't. We'll never do that. So how, how do they manage that? And then they, you know, they say that how, they had this encounter with Jesus. This one encounter where Jesus appeared to them. Right? They experienced the presence of God. They experienced the power of God and the reality of, of God. And they said, you know, we can never, you know, we can never argue against that experience. We can never, you know, after, you know, no matter what people will do, we could never go back and say, yes, we give up. No, we were so strengthened by that. So, they were so strengthened in that prison, despite all the physical discomfort, you know, food not happening, you know, this absolutely unhygienic conditions, absolutely unhygienic conditions. You know, if you go play in the dust and you come back, you know, maybe you're playing volleyball, whatever, your football, you want to change, right? You're sweating, you know, mud all over, maybe. What is the thing? You just want to go have a bath. You want to change, change into some clean clothes. Imagine that not happening for months, right? It's not like you're, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a sane person, right? That is not happening day after day after day and month after month. It's, you know, you don't have that privilege. And yet they talk about how they were fresh and flourishing and how they were renewed in their strength. No weariness, renewed in their strength to continue on with Jesus. And and the interviewer asked them, you know, how, how did you manage? It was this, the presence of God. They experienced the presence of God and that was enough, right? The presence of God we experience uh, in, in the word of God and, and, and also in the tangible manifest presence of God. You know, one word, the God, the Lord speaks, he releases, you receive it. It could be a song that is, you know, birthed in our hearts and we are so renewed. We are so renewed in our strength. We are refreshed also. You know, then that's the next thing. Uh, Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, it says, Repent and therefore uh, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of God. The times of refreshing, and that word used, used there is seasons of refreshing. Right? Seasons of refreshing. So it's like chunks of time, right? When you say season, it's a, it's a chunk of time, it's months. So it talks about seasons of refreshing coming from the presence of God, right? So um, refreshing meaning revival or, or a recovery of breath, all that coming from the presence of God, right? So who is this for? Who is this for? What is all this for? Who is this for? It is for us. Right? It's not for someone, you know, out there. It is for it's for us. It is for you. All this is, this is, you know, this is for us. So if we had never ever experienced this, the Lord is inviting us to experience this. He's saying, you know, you draw near. Right? You draw near, I will draw near. You wait, I will renew. You draw near. If there's anything going on in your life, poor choices, poor lifestyle, repent. Seasons of refreshing you will experience. Right? So that's for us as believers. We need to understand that it's not for you know some holy, you know, uh, infinitely holy person somewhere, you know, who's got everything right, everything figured out. And no, it's for us today, right now, as believers.
right? Okay, so in the presence of God, a few more things, right? Uh, miracles take place, right? Um, it talks about when we read um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 37, a you know, very specific verse says, Because he loved your fathers, therefore he chose their descendants after them, and he brought you out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. Now, the presence and the power of God go together. Okay, let me say that you know, the presence and the power of God go together, that you can't just separate the two. In his presence is his power, right? So, the presence and power of God go together. So in the presence of God, there are these supernatural things that takes place. There are the miracles that take place. And here, you know, he brought them out of Egypt with his presence, with his mighty power. Right? And there are pleasures forevermore, meaning that, you know, um, great victories and other things that God chooses to bring into our lives. Um, going further, we see that uh, evil is overpowered. There's vanquishing of enemies there you know maybe there's an attack by the enemy maybe there's attack by oppression by the evil spirits um, there is a need for deliverance the presence of god suddenly there is a release you know there's a heaviness on our lives and maybe we are just bent down heavy oppressed all the time but in the presence of god there is release you know i remember um, this this person coming and this is a teenager and she's coming and saying you know going through a lot of stuff going through a lot of problems right uh, at home parents are fighting uh, all the time and um, you know parents are also talking down on her all the time she's not able to focus on studies not able to a lot of things happening and she's also you know being tempted for self harm you know uh, and she's cutting herself, and all that is happening. And, and so she says, you know, and these voices, oppressive voices all the time, not able to sleep, not able to you know, function during the waking hours. But she says, when I come to church, when I come to church, and when I sit and I'm there, there during the time of worship, and that's when I'm happy. All these voices, everything just stops. I'm suddenly I'm just experiencing peace like never before. You know, all that heaviness, it just goes away. All, everything just melts away. You know, and the Bible talks about that, right? The, the mountains, the hills melt like wax in the presence of God. And if you see a candle burning and wax melting, you know, that's the thing. If you see a huge mountain, that melts like wax in the presence of God because he's so powerful. So you know, she's saying that you know, this is what happens. So one thing was to you know, teach her about you know, the, the authority that she has and who she is as a believer and so that she can walk in authority and, and come against all these, you know, all this attack of the enemy and all that. So, uh, you know, how to keep her mind renewed and all those things. But the fact is that she said, you know, something so powerful. She said, in the, when I come to church, when, I, when I'm there in worship, then all these things just go away. Everything just goes Right. So we know hey, it's not the song that we're singing. It's the presence of God that's making the difference. It's not some, you know, it's not, uh, you know, it's not the great music or whatever. No, it's the truth that we are proclaiming and God receiving that and God manifesting his presence even as he receives that praise and worship. So, so never underestimate you know, the presence of God puts to fight, you know, puts to flight the works of the enemy right the deeds of the enemy the the attacks of the enemy evil is overpowered right so we see all these things uh, there are there are other things also that we can uh, we can read through in the book and it talks about his presence and uh, and and that's something for uh, that's something that i want to say you know when we talk about the presence of god whether it's where we are in indwelling presence whether it's the promised presence as the people of God gather together, or it is the very tangible manifest presence of God, right? whatever it is, in the presence of God, there are these amazing things happening. God brings about this. Well, do we seek the presence of God for these things to happen? Yes. If you have a need, right? that's who he is. We go to him. Right? We desire that. 
do we seek him just for these things to happen in our lives and do we not seek him when these things are you know we don't have a need no right we go we seek his presence we seek the person right who brings about these things in our lives right so so that's why you know just started by saying that you know there is more right there is more so let's continue to pursue delight in the word of god delight in the presence of god okay and make sure that this is protected this is defended right it's like you know would you defend your family would you defend your loved ones would you defend yourself if there was an attack yes you would right this is worth defending because this is something so so precious right okay any questions pastor i can say something sure sure yeah pastor thank you so much in the same thing with which we are talking now right now in the same yeah. time the happened to my life a uh, trio back when uh, okay. on morning time pastor when i'm uh, 8:30 yeah 8:30 when uh, i uh, my children i have a uh, exam i give them breakfast and all then uh, they, i tell them don't come in my room i'm going to pray then i'm i'm going to pray i close the door then i start read the word after reading i don't know how, how many chapter i read the word but i'm reading the word and uh, then i just start worship then uh, uh, three type of uh, worship i worship means uh, language konkani uh, english and hindi then uh, i didn't see also time what the time i didn't see that the time then i just uh, worship the lord then uh, the hindi song last song i worship the song uh, hindi song to hai yaha then god touching me then i i just worship the lord lord yes lord i you are holy you are worthy lord i believe your name then i bless your name so then i just i worship the lord pastor then god touching me so so i'm i don't know what happened to me i'm crying uh, then I, i'm shouting i'm crying at home in my room then uh, god touching me god showing me everything then i start speak tongue that time after uh, three or back i have a gift of tongue but just little like five four word like this but mm. i can't understand also that uh, language uh, mm. gift of tongue then uh, that time pastor uh, a gift of tongue release more and more and uh, gift of prophecy and gift of healing also but mm. uh, i'm telling god what is that i'm crying i'm in the floor and i'm crying then i'm asking god lord what is this mean i don't know i didn't see any means that first time i means for us means that time i mm. encounter to god i'm asking lord which which uh, language this and which country this lord uh, showing me many country and many people see these people they seek they see what happened for these people and all so i'm asking lord which country this lord telling me this so that time means worship is the very very powerful and worship is this mm. uh, uh, god uh, means and helping us to encounter mm. to god thank right. you so much pastor god thank bless you. you thank you so yeah. much awesome thank you for sharing that yeah so true right so so the thing is for us to you know continue to pursue there are, yes there are times when uh, physically we are tired there are times when you know emotionally we are down etc but we come back you know we come back for a reset we come back and say okay god i know this is this is important this is what matters in my life this needs to be something precious in my life and so uh, this is what brings stability Uh, you are the one who brings stability so i'm going to pursue that right okay so just want to encourage all of us to do that okay okay any 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 questions anything um uh, how can we cultivate god presence sir how can we cultivate yeah i'm glad you use the word cultivate because cultivation means that something that grows right uh, agriculture something like you sow something that uh, we water you nurture you protect and then it grows like bears fruit right so yeah this is something that we need to have in place in our lives right it doesn't come overnight you know we might have a you know fantastic encounter but we know that we need to have a you know we there's something that we make it as part of our lifestyle right so yeah so many ways because we we pray 
some very fundamental basic things you know we spend time in prayer we spend time in reading the word of god we spend time you know worshiping him uh, in spirit and in truth we spend time praying in the spirit uh, singing in the spirit you know all this you know we need to do that but the most important thing is throughout the day right throughout the day to have an awareness of the presence of god throughout the day wherever we are right we could be doing some mundane things arranging chairs sweeping the thing swabbing have an awareness of the presence of god you know there's there's this person uh, i forget his name i think this is his father augustine or someone you know of the early church so uh, so he, he's talking about you know he, he well he did some menial tasks you know he'll be like gardening he'll be working in the kitchen cooking for a lot of people and you know cleaning the tables and all that he says in that he delights in the presence of god where you know sometimes we think no i i need to i need to sit with my guitar uh i need to put on my earphones and you know i need to listen to that song forever and then i only then i experience the presence of god no 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 in your mundane things you know in those everyday things be aware of the presence of god recognize the presence of god be aware and say you know god i know you are here talk to jesus all the time you know take those moments off and and thank the lord you know, you're experiencing okay good weather sunshine lord i thank you just talk to jesus because he's listening right and you're you know maybe you're enjoying a good food good meal just thank the lord right just make it a practice like uh, i think it was brother andrew who talks about you no know, practicing the presence of god so this is how we practice right where it's a relationship of course he is there so it's not like play acting you know some of us kids we had imaginary friends right some some children they'll play they'll be talking oh, who are you talking to no this is uh, you know the sonu or whatever you know is imaginary friend they're talking to imaginary playmate imaginary pet it's not like that God is not some imagination. He's real, right? I remember once, you know, I was just going jogging. I was just uh, after that, I was just walking back home. I was finished. I was just walking back home, and um, as I was walking back, um, I don't know what I was thinking of, but I I was just aware of the presence of God, of God being there, right there next to me. what was he doing some physical you know exercise okay whatever just going back but the presence of god just walking and it, and it was it was so uh, you know unspiritual moment on the road walking back but being aware of the presence of god like as if he's just saying god you know i'm 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 with you uh, i know there were a lot of questions on my mind about so many things but the presence of god saying yeah god this i'm with you we'll journey through this i'll take you through reassuring presence of god so to be aware of the presence of god wherever we are you know my i think for me personally my most uh, you know powerful times are when i'm commuting in bangalore traffic right going from bible college to home home you know wherever full traffic you know people going crazy ah, everybody shouting and all that but got my windows up i'm just you know maybe praising god is worshiping god is listening to some message and all that is having that god moment right experiencing the presence of god so so the thing is this don't segregate don't compartmentalize those 24 hours that we have into okay this is god time this is me time now this is for me you know i'm going to just disconnect from god sometimes we do that no i'm going on vacation just you know all this while i've been reading bible bible prayer you know bible college from bible college you go back home for vacation now i'm not going to touch the bible now i'll five days before i go back to class then i'll open dust it sometimes we just disconnect like that no we can't on vacation pack your bible first <laughs> right next to after your toothbrush and clothes you know just put the bible in first wherever you are whatever you're doing or as part of you so that's that's the best way to cultivate 
this whole thing of being aware of the presence of God. And then when we come together, when we gather together in corporate worship, which is what we're going to look at next, personal and corporate worship, oh, worship just explodes. You know, just we become more and more aware of the tangible presence of God. It's just an overflow of what we've been practicing throughout in our lives, right? Okay, uh, see a comment here. Sometimes we feel God's presence in less quantity, sometimes in more quantity. Why is this so? Okay, many factors. It could be maybe some things that we are going through emotionally as well, right? Sometimes uh, maybe our mind is distracted with other things and uh, maybe it could be one of the reasons, right? We are not aware, you're not sensitive to what's happening. But also I just wanted to say that you know, uh, of course, you're referring to the manifest presence of God, tangible presence of God. And, and well, one is that, you know, our side. One is also from, from God's side, you know. He chooses. He chooses to manifest his presence in different ways. That, is, that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, the manifest presence is, is more or more precious than the indwelling presence. No. Presence of God is presence of God, whatever it is. It's precious, whatever, right? So, so that's the thing. And uh, sometimes it, it is an anointing for a particular for a particular purpose, right? For a particular assignment. And so maybe you're preaching, maybe you're ministering, maybe you're praying for someone, and then you feel the you know the power, the presence of God because for the work that needs to be done, that needs to be completed. So it could be that as well, right? But um, so that that could be explaining you know the the magnet or the degrees to which we are aware of the uh, presence of God, right? So I hope that answers. Okay. 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 So uh, any other questions? Any other thoughts? Okay. So we yeah you have none. Okay. So let's uh, let's just pray. Right? Let's just pray uh, in the light of what we heard, and maybe we can take some time to, you know, um, to set things aside. You know, these are which are hindering, right? And the way to best way to do it is just to talk to God and say, God, you know, maybe you prayed this thousand times before, and you're sick and tired of praying the same thing. You know, you're saying, God, I've come to you, I've told you uh, that I need to set this right, and you know, you're, you're you're even tired of just praying that prayer. But no problem, you know, God is not tired of listening. Right? So you, you know, you can come back, you know, because he said it so in the Gospels, you know, that in the, in the prayer of the persistent widow and so on. So he's not tired. So we can go back to him. So you don't get tired. You, know, you just pray and ask the Lord, God, I need to set these things away from my life. Okay. These things are stealing. These things are creeping in. And uh, these things are, you know, taking away. Um, keeping me away from pursuing you uh, with all my heart. You know, it could be you know, some things that we are watching on social media. Maybe we need to uninstall some apps on our phones. You know, maybe we should not be visiting those things. Um, you know, we might think, oh, it's informative, etc. No, no, just for a season, just uninstall, just take it away. Um, I know people who don't use a smartphone. You know, they're saying they're just using a regular phone because they don't want anything to hinder um, their pursuit of God. So maybe we might have to make some choice like that. What we do in our leisure time, what we do for entertainment, maybe that needs to be reprioritized. You know? That needs to change. And, um, and that's fine, as long as you understand the value of the presence of God and saying, I'm doing it for this, for the sake of this. So you talk to God, you talk to the Lord, just ask him to speak to your heart. You know, maybe you can even pray in the spirit, pray in tongues softly, just between you and God, so that you can hear yourself praying in tongues and um, being becoming sensitive to what God is speaking to you. Lord, I come to you so I can gather. 
Yes, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord, teach us, Lord, to prioritize our lives, Father God. I just want to add that, you know, um, responsibilities that God has given us, you know, um, just do that. It doesn't mean that we um, shirk our responsibilities. Well, God is aware of the responsibilities in our lives, the season that we are in, and, and he will give us the grace to fulfill those responsibilities and seek his presence. So uh, it's not about letting go of our rightful responsibilities. We take care of them and pursue the presence of God. you know, sometimes the pain that we experience and the, and the frustration can become a trigger point. You know, you can just you put it to good use and say, yeah, this pain, this frustration, uh, I, I don't want to have any of that now. I'm just going to move on. Move on with God. Just move on. Step forward, and uh, I just want to, don't want to be in that place of pain and frustration. I want to step ahead. Put it to good use. And for those of us who, who need the reviving, you know, the strength and Saying, God, I'm weary. You know, just, just receive from Him this morning. It might be something that you feel. It might be something that you don't feel. But just go ahead by faith and say, Lord, I just pour out Your strength. You, you promise that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And so, God, uh, let my strength be renewed. Let my strength be renewed. I don't want to be weary anymore. Let my strength be renewed. And <laughs> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ. His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given 
Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Yes, God. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you. Let's just open our mouths and just give thanks to the Lord. Just say, Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence in each one of our lives. Thank you, Lord. Every day, God, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, oh God, your name is to be praised, Father God. Yes, Lord, you never let go of us, Father God. You will never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. We thank you for the privilege of knowing you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the privilege, O oh God, of spending time in your presence, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, you are, Lord, uh, incom uncomparable, Father God. You are beautiful, amazing, God. Beautiful beyond any description, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, there is no one on, on the heavens like you, Father God. Yes, Lord, there's no one on the earth or the heavens who is your equal, O oh Father God. You are beautiful beyond all description, all human description, O oh God. All human words, O oh Father God. You are beyond all that oh father god and like the psalmist said oh for a thousand tongues lord to sing your redeem your praise oh father god to sing the sweet redeemer's praise yes father god yes lord we come before you this morning lord lord in worship oh father god in adoration father god lord in esteeming oh father god your presence oh father god yes lord we just want to say oh god that your words your precepts oh god your principles oh god are more precious than gold oh father god or silver oh father god yes lord they are life itself oh father god your word there is there is spirit and it is life oh father god yes lord where can we go from your presence oh father Father God, like the psalmist says, oh, Father God, you are there, oh God. And Lord, we value, Lord, we welcome, Lord. Lord, we are hungry, oh God, for your presence, Master. Yes, Lord, we pray that, that even during the day, oh, Father God, in the mundane, in the routine, things of day, Lord, that we will be constantly aware of your presence, Lord. They enable us not to be disconnected in our minds, not to be disconnected, oh God, in, in any way, oh God, from your presence, oh, Father God. Maybe in Intently and intentionally, O oh God, constantly be aware of your presence and always, Lord, esteem and Lord, respect and honor your presence, Father God, above everything else, O oh Father God, and honor you above everything else, O oh Father God. We thank you, Lord. We value, O oh God. We value you. We esteem your word. Yes, Lord, cause us to delight in your word, Father God. Enable us to just enjoy and delight in your word, for your word indeed, Lord, they are spirit and they are life, O oh Master, and life to all. All who find them, O oh Father God. Yes, Lord, your word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, O oh Father God. Your word is life itself, O oh God. Yes, Master, we thank you that your word brings faith, Lord. Your word builds faith in us, O oh Master. And we need faith every day, O oh Father God. For your word says, the just shall live by faith. Yes, Master, you've invited each one of us, Lord, to live that kind of life, O oh God. You're inviting us, O oh God, to come up to a higher level, a higher realm of walk with you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this invitation. And Lord, our hearts respond. Yes, Lord. When, like the psalmist says, when you said, seek my face, uh, my heart said, your face, oh God, I will seek. You know, let that be our prayer today. You know, this even today, you know, when the Lord says, you know, seek my face, may we say it from our hearts. Not just because we have to, not just because, you know, it is something that is there in the word, but let our heart seek him wholeheartedly, not holding back. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this awesome and amazing privilege. Enable us to continue on this journey, Lord. 
Lord, being aware and welcoming and inviting your presence. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. God bless you, guys. Um, we'll meet again next class. Thank you.